Hello parents, this is Mary Keenly, Principal of St. Teresa School with the parent update for March 11th. There's been a lot going on at St. Teresa School these days and looking forward to a great third trimester that starts today. To start out with, we have our rescheduled open house this Sunday, starting with mass at 11 o'clock in the main church and then heading on over to school after Mass for the open house. Don't forget to remind your child to wear his or her uniform to Mass because then they'll get a dress down pass for Monday. I hope you can enjoy us for Ma I hope you can join us for Mass at 11:30, open house at 12:30 this Sunday, March 13th. We're also excited about the technology that's going to be delivered starting right when we get back from break. This is the technology that we purchased from the Emergency Connectivity Fund, and it is finally up in the building, formatted and ready to go. In this program, we will be able to be one-to-one -one on Chromebooks for all students in grades kindergarten through seventh, and one-to-one -one as we have been with iPads for eighth graders. Not only can this technology be used here in school, but it's available to go home if you desire it to go home with your child each day. The technology is protected by our new security software called Securely, and you'll be hearing more about this when the deployment occurs on March the 28th. We are also excited that our chapel construction finally starts this Monday, March 14th, just a couple days from now. Now you might be wondering with this gorgeous Adoration Chapel that we have right already here on campus, why are we building a second chapel right inside the building? Well, the reason is simple, is that we want to be saints. We want to have an encounter with our Lord. We want to become friends with our Lord, and we want him to be an active part guiding our lives. We can't do that unless we can talk with him, and the best way to speak with him is when he is truly present in the tabernacle. So we are building a chapel in this building so that everyone, parents, staff, students, can have access to our Lord in a very easy and comfortable manner. We know that we send our children to St. Teresa School so that they not only are intellectually armed, but spiritually and theologically armed as well, that they use their gifts and their knowledge of God for the sake of all humanity. And as we look at our world today, isn't that a wonderful thing? And doesn't our world need more of, nor of that? People that understand the Beatitudes and live the Beatitudes in their daily life. Our teachers as well are striving to help form your children and they want to live the teachings of the Catholic Church and the Beatitudes to the best of their abilities as well. The chapel will help us do that. We're excited for the construction of the chapel, like I said, this Monday. The design of the chapel will be classical in nature, mimicking the main chapel, and it will be open whenever our school building is open which means you as parents can come in and use the chapel as well. You will also have opportunities to participate in the adornment of the chapel, purchasing items um, as you see fit for the chapel, the candlesticks and altar linens and things like that. And we already have our first gift of adornment coming from a very special source, which you'll be hearing about uh, shortly. The consecration of the chapel will be in the fall when we return from summer. The design of the chapel, as I mentioned, is classical in nature, being simple and sleek and all everything leading the eye back to the center of the chapel, which is the tabernacle. In these rough drawings, you can see that there is a narthex or a passageway allowing us to transition from the busy, noisy work that we have in the hallways and in the classrooms into this sacred, solemn, quiet space that we will have to be with our Lord. There will be sufficient seating and sizing for one classroom or approximately 25 people. And it will be a chapel that is accessible to all sizes of people from our very small three-year-old size to our very adult 14-year-old size and of course the parents and the staff. What a great project to be engaging on as we are living the season of Lent together as we pray every day in Lent, we have added a special intention each day for our journey to Holy Week and Easter. We are praying for everyone's intentions 
peace in the world to local intentions like family members who are ill. It is guiding us step by step and keeping our hearts full of prayer on our journey this Lent to Holy Week. You can also participate in our journey next Friday when we pray the Stations of the Cross together at 1230 in the main church. I hope you can join the children as we pray together and then immediately are dismissed for spring break following the Stations of the Cross. There are other opportunities in our parish to live Lent and Holy Week well. Just hop on the parish website and you can find a whole host of events, activities, and resources to pray and to grow this Lent. I'd like to introduce you to the Lenten mission uh, series that we have going on during spring break, uh, three speakers that will guide our Lenten journey. These will be live cast and they will also be recorded. So if you're not available on those days, they will be available to you at a later time. We're also adding a dynamic to the main chapel, the Adoration Chapel in the parish, of a family hour on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. If you are uncomfortable bringing your family, this might be a great time to do it because other families will be there as well. But that said, the chapel is always open and it is always available to families in this highly sacred space. Don't forget that again, there are resources on the parish website. And above all, don't forget the famous Lenten tradition of fish fries, especially on April 1st, there's gonna be a fish fry uh, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus at St. Thomas that the proceeds of which will support St. Teresa School. And next year, if all things go as planned, we'll be able to have the fish fries right here on campus in our brand new kitchen and renovated Lower Dolan space. So as we wind down third trimester and end up this school year, we're already making preparations for the next school year. Registration was completed in mid-February and we're now beginning the process of making classroom placements for your child for 22-23. And the goal of these placements is very simple. We want to give your child the best fit we possibly can for his or her learning. If you have comments about this and want to let us know some things about your child, how they learn, how they're structured, please don't hesitate to send me an email no later than April 1st, telling me a little bit about your child and how he or she learns. Now, we don't want to request a specific teacher because that's not the way we assign uh, students to teachers, but we do want to know about your child and how they learn. Sometimes your experience with a teacher is helpful because you know that they teach in this manner or use this type of structure, but just because an older child had a teacher does not mean your younger child will necessarily be placed with that teacher. So don't be afraid to speak up and let us know things about your child. You also might want to talk about your child's friends and friends they should or should not be placed with. Sometimes the best buddies are not the best people to be learning with. If you want to make a, a suggestion about who your child should be placed with, please suggest two or three students who may be a good fit with your child um, so that we have some options. And just because you request it does not mean we can guarantee that placement. But if you give us some ideas, it's very helpful. So if you want to make comments about your child's placement, they are due to me no later than Friday, April 1st. The placements will go home on Friday, June the 3rd, and moving up day when your child will meet his or her new teacher will be on Monday, June the 6th. Enrollment for next year is looking very strong as we continue our growth uh, since the 2016 school year on an upward trajectory towards full enrollment at 500 students. But even more exciting than this growth is the stable nature of our K, or K through 8, which is what is called our permanent enrollment um, from the very beginning from 2013 to date. That enrollment has steadily increased since the 2014-15 school year and is headed on its trajectory also to that 500 number. There are some developments next year, the most striking of which is going to be a bell schedule change, which is due to a change in the bus schedule. At this point, we do not know what that bell schedule change is going to be. We are in conversation with transportation in District 15 to find out what the bus schedules are, and we hope to know that very soon. We will also be hiring a director of development for the parish to assist with advancement and fundraising. You will know about staff changes when we make the student placements in May, and students will have one-to-one -one technology from the start of the school year next year. 
and you'll learn more about that closer to the deployment on March 28th of this year. We're also going to be using a new math series to guide our math instruction, and you'll be hearing more about that during the summer. Above all, though, the most exciting development for 2022-23, in addition to the increased enrollment, is just normalcy. We're looking for a old, plain old normal school year next year with no distractions so that we can focus on learning and socializing and playing and growing into the Christian scholars that you want your children to be. Please pray for this and let's keep things going in the right direction. And speaking of our favorite virus, let's talk about some other uh, COVID and some other health and safety um, information. Our COVID rate still remains zero. Um, however, our other rates are increasing. We do appreciate it when you call your child in sick if you say why they're out, why they're sick, because we do like to trace the patterns of these as well. In terms of masks, masks are still optional now in all settings, including the bus. If you are traveling this spring break, we would appreciate it if you would let us know where you're going by completing the form attached to this email. If, when, or when you return from your travel, you are showing symptoms of COVID, or if you realize that you have been with people who are positive, we ask that you please test and demonstrate a negative test. A home test is perfectly sufficient for this. Otherwise, enjoy your trip. Have fun resting, relaxing, and enjoying the travel activities that you've planned. In terms of campus safety, we have one serious issue that we need to remind you about is that in the morning drop-off, you may not enter the Benton Street parking lot until after the buses are gone, after 7.30. We had a very near miss last week uh, that we don't want repeated. It was very scary there for a couple seconds. Um, if you are dropping your middle schooler off, they need to pull off on Benton Street in the pull-off there. Ask your kid child to leave the car and walk the sidewalk up to door seven. If you don't want your child to walk, then simply pull around in the regular drop-off line and drop them off at door two and they will make their way to the middle school. But please do not enter the Benton Street parking lot until after the buses are through, which is around 7.30. As I have already told you, we will be starting construction on the chapel um, on this Monday coming up and there will be construction workers in the school. We will be working with Mazer Construction who has handled all the construction on the campus for the last six or seven years. All construction workers will be clearly badged with a Mazer Construction badge. They're all background check. They will also not be in any student areas without a school staff escort. They will be restricted to the chapel space um, in the entering and exiting of that space. Um, Mazer does a great job and takes our um, needs very seriously. And so I have a high degree of confidence in this construction project safety. As always, just some quick reminders. Of course, the open house this Sunday, starting with mass at 1130. Thursday is St. Patrick's Day. And as is our custom, our Trinity Irish dancers are back. They will be with us at 1.30 in the gym. And then on Friday, March 18th, we will be praying the Stations of the Cross at 1230. You, of course, are invited. Dismissal for spring break will be at 1.30 for K through eight and 1.45 for preschool. And there will not be any afternoon step because we're closing the building down and getting everybody on to spring break. School will be closed from the 21st to the 25th. There will be no staff on campus and there will be no staff answering communication during that time. We will also be closed April 15th and April 18th, Good Friday and Easter Monday for the celebration of the sacred uh, Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Holy Saturday and the celebration of Easter on Sunday and extending out to Monday. Stay tuned for an announcement about Dads and Donuts. Dads and Donuts is back. We're just getting it on the calendar. So look forward to celebrating Dads and Donuts together in the upcoming weeks. And of course, save the date for Green and Gold 2022, celebrating a Hawaiian celebration theme of our school on May 14th. Invitations will be coming via email this year very soon. I hope you can come and sponsor and support this event that helps underwrite your tuition and underwrite the expenses of our school that has allowed us to grow and flourish. Thank you so much to the parent coordinating team that has worked so hard making this an exciting event for us, the return of Green and Gold 2022 on May 14th. 
Finally, as we end up, don't forget to change your clocks ahead one hour on Saturday night or you're going to be really late for Mass on Sunday. Daylight Savings Time starts in Chicago on Saturday night to Sunday. So have a great weekend. As always, don't hesitate to give me a call or an email if you need clarification or have any questions. I hope you have a great week. I hope to see you on Sunday and again on Friday for Stations of the Cross. And I hope you have a great spring break together. Have a great weekend. See everybody on Sunday.